and he was like, hey, uh, slip and fall at Home Depot. Um, and I was like, okay, let's go. Um, so I took my, you know, my clipboard <laughs> and I got in my car and I drove to Home Depot and somewhere like 45, 50 minutes away. And I felt like, you know, this top, you know, top notch PI investigator, lawyer. <laughs> took out my phone and started taking pictures and interviewed her. And yeah, it was exciting. In law school, attorneys are taught to challenge everything, tear things apart, break them down. But the qualities that make lawyers great are some of the worst for running a business. And what happens when you try to add life and family to the mix? It can feel nearly impossible. You don't have to do this alone. I'm Maria Monroy, president and co-founder of LawRank, a leading SEO agency for ambitious law firms. Each week we hear from industry leaders on what it really takes to run a law firm, from marketing to manifestation. Because success lies in the balance of life and law, we're here to help you tip the scales. Today I'm live with Yossi Yahudai. I wanted to meet with him because he uses a platform called Levitate for client success. So it sends newsletters, it can request reviews, and can really create an awesome client experience. Today we discuss Levitate, we discuss starting a law firm during a recession, we talk about the client experience. All right, well thank you for taking the time. Now, I posted on, I had a client that sent me a message asking if I knew anything about a specific software. What's it called? Levitate. Levitate. And I posted on Instagram and I only had two responses. You were one of them. Okay. And I'm really curious. I want to hear, because it sounds amazing. So tell us a little bit about this. Sure. Um, you know, we've, we've always wanted to uh, do a better job of client contact, um, not just uh, current clients, but especially past clients and even potential clients. Uh, keeping in touch with them, um, you know, there's so many uh, options out there. So we just wanted a way for them to remember us, just like a friendly reminder without kind of being uh, too overbearing, um, too aggressive. So they reached out to me and explained that they were a company that, you know, sends out newsletters um, with different templates, surveys that can lead to reviews. So their big thing was, um, keep in touch with your clients, get more reviews, mm -hmm. and hopefully have them remember you in the next time somebody needs a referral. Um, so we looked into it, and we've done a couple other things similar to Levitate, um, but they have been the best so far um, in terms of like how customizable it is. So they have, you, you go on, and you can choose um, from their templates in terms of like topics. So they have two, they have, you know, different areas you have they want like educational ones so if you see my you know our firms TikTok and Instagram videos they have topics the same kind of topics that we talk about like what to do in a personal injury case you know what's uninsured motorist just like the, like the standard PI questions so they'll turn that into a newsletter and explain like a fake like a you know A to Z FAQ of all these things um, so it's a great resource in terms of like educating your clients um, and then, you know, having them, you know, keeping them in mind. Um, but you can also have like lighthearted moments. So they have like holiday themes and, you know, um, you know, like March Madness and right now is going on. So like you can do a newsletter about that. So, and you can do it as many times as you want. They recommend one to three times a month, which, which I agree with. I think any more than three and three might be too much. Um, so wait, hold on. I have a few questions yeah. before I forget. Are you tracking um, the percentage of opens? Um, we are. Okay. Um, so, and what's your goal to you have know, what percentage of opens? You know, it's our, it, it, we've done it, only done it for a couple months. Um, it's our first time doing a program like this. So I don't know what the standard is. That's the honest truth. Um, you know, if we can, if we can keep 90% of our clientele, because people are going to unsubscribe. I mean, that's just natural, you know? And people. are you removing, uh, people that aren't opening it like no. after x amount of times are you saying it's better to remove them no because people are busy you know people get flooded with emails you know i know how, i know what it feels like maybe they missed it or just they don't have time but you know if in seven months their friend has gone to an accident and they see our newsletter they'll be like oh wait you know joe needs this let me open it and it might lead to a referral so i don't think there's any harm at all if they don't open it it's only obviously if they ask you to unsubscribe that you, you know you should obviously do that well the reason i ask and we do something completely different but for us 
your URL can get flagged. So if you're sending out these newsletters and people aren't opening them and you're, it impacts your percentage of open rate, then you don't want a situation where um, it's flagged because then what, what will happen is when you send out a newsletter, not, they'll all go to spam, mm. right? right? So that's one thing that I would look into it. You probably won't have as much of an issue just depending on how many people you're sending it to, but right. that's like one thing to kind of be on the lookout for. That's a Google thing? Yeah. Okay. All right, we've got to look into that. Yeah, and that's why it's really important to keep an eye on the open rate. Okay. As well, because you don't want a situation where all of a sudden you go from 50% open rate to zero right. or to 10%. Um, now, it sounds like this has a bird eye similar component mm -hmm. or podium, it which does. is how it was also presented to me by this particular client. And I'm a, we internally use BirdEye for our clients, and we love anything that'll help you get reviews. Yeah. But this sounds like it's a combination where not only, hey, let's get, let's get these reviews, but let's stay on top of those clients for referrals, which I think also social media can definitely help with that. Um, I have a friend that said, the moment I started doing all these TikTok videos, my referrals went yeah. up. So does it integrate with social in any way? So it's funny you ask. They just sent out a webinar a couple of weeks ago, like either like the same week you contacted me or right around then, that they are now um, introducing a social media integration. So they are literally working right now on our first social media custom post. Interesting. I haven't seen it yet because they're still working on it. Um, we're obviously going to use it. Um, I don't know what it's, what it's going to look like. I wasn't, you know, when we signed up in December, that was never discussed. I never expected that. And that was okay. Cause we know we have our own means to do social media, but now they're trying to get into the game, which makes sense. Um, so yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna do a social media post for us custom. Um, I'm sure based on my experience with them, they'll have like templates or like kind of social media posts, like, you know, things that are already pre pre-designed mm -hmm. that you can use, which is great. Um, and then I'm sure they'll have some sort of, you know, customizable program where they'll make custom posts. So yes, they are definitely, um, going towards that route to get social media. Involved. Now, how much involvement does this require from the firm? Are they doing everything or you need someone that... Good question. I mean, of course you could do it yourself, but not the best use of your time. You know, I have my intake manager do it. Okay. Um, it makes most sense. You know, she's in charge of intakes and client acquisition. Um, she works on it a couple hours a week, you know, two, three hours a week. Um, not too much, not too time consuming. Um, everything's streamlined now. Obviously in the beginning, you're going to work a little more to work on your list and, you know, maybe some templates and stuff, but it's also depending on you. If you want to just use their templates, you're going to, you're going to be spending a lot less time. If you want to do more custom work, well, that's going to involve more time, more editing, more creating. Um, but you know, to get a good ROI out of it, I would say two or three hours a week. So it's basically, you still need someone to go in there and take these templates and customize them and send out the newsletter, send out the emails to get the reviews. Yeah. I mean, with AI now, maybe that's not going to be, <laughs> maybe not, maybe not in a month, but for now, yeah, humans need to do it for now. Okay. Has she tried using uh, <laughs> chat? You... I, I think we're about to start trying it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm being serious. Yeah. We'll look into that now. That's what people are same so you you started the, to implement this because of um you i don't know what to call it client um what would you call it client contact yeah for client Every. is there anything else that you're doing Rev for client contact experience contact just like having an awesome you know client right. experience basically um yeah great question i mean i think every law firm owner especially pi um that's a big big component of um a firm um, so, you know, just like everybody else, we have our swag bag when they sign up. Um, so we, you know, mail. Wait, wait, wait. Just like every, everybody does not have a swag bag. Okay, fine. I, I mean, I would argue that no. So tell me what's in the swag bag. No, I can't tell you that. Are you serious? No, of course I can. Um, so we have, you know, we have like a presentation folder that's like fully, you know, based on our firm where our, their retainer documents go in. Um, like a document holder, like that goes in their glove compartment, you know, in case, you know, they get into an accident, they know exactly what to ask for. We have pens, uh, pop socket, um, bags, 
um, wireless charger. Did you bring me one? You, you didn't ask. <laughs> I didn't know you had a swag bag. Yeah, you're gonna ask me. <laughs> okay, um, what else was in there? Like, uh, we just uh, um, a tumbler, uh, a, wow. power, a power bank. It's competitive out here. You you got to do this kind of I stuff. I didn't. This is not a thing nationwide. Oh, well, come, welcome to California, to LA. Welcome to Los Angeles. All right. So tell me a little bit about your firm. Sure. Give us some history about you and your firm. Um, went out on my own in 09. Okay. Um, after, you look young. Thank you. Thank you very much. How old were you when you went out on your own? On my own? Yeah. I was 28. So pretty young for starting yeah. your own firm. I had worked for a couple brothers for a year and a half doing real estate transactional. Um, didn't think I was going to go down that route. Um, but the recession hit. Um, things were, you know, very bleak. Uh, I was trying to get a job um, because I didn't see any future at where I was. I was at a boutique real estate firm. And I couldn't, I literally didn't get one interview. Not one. You know, I sent out so many resumes. I mean, nobody, I mean, this is back in, you know, late 08. Yeah, uh, that was a rough so, time. So, you know, and so after a few months of literally not getting one, you know, response, um, I reached out to an old friend, mentor, who actually videoed my bar mitzvah. That's how long I've known him for. And he became, he was a PI attorney. And uh, I was like, hey, can I come work for you? Um, you know, like things are really tough right now. I got to like start my career. And he's like, dude, don't come work for me. Do what I did. Come, you know, go start on your own. Come rent an office, sub sublease for me. And uh, I'll teach you everything how to run your own practice. And that was the last thing that I was expecting when I took him out to lunch that day. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, I never, ever considered that in, in these two or three months that I was trying to, you know, figure out what to do. That's amazing. Who is this? Can you say? Sure, Joseph Farzal. Okay, that's, I mean, that was really kind of him in my opinion. Yeah, and literally two weeks later, I was in his office starting my own practice, not having any idea what I was doing. Wow, I've heard a few stories like this. I've actually had a few guests on that just, I've had some that literally started their own practice out of law school. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. I mean, yeah, mine was, or I would say mine is pretty similar to that because yeah. nothing that I did as a real estate transactional attorney, right. nothing applied to, right. to PI. So what was that transition like to where you are today? Oh, it's been nice. I mean, you know, we're at 25 now. Um, 25 employees? Yeah, employees, yeah. Four attorneys. It's amazing. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, still trying to grow. I uh, hope so. <laughs> every, every, of course, every day, every day trying to get, you know, better and bigger. Um, every year it's getting more competitive. You know, every year it's getting a little more saturated. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, it's getting more expensive. Yes. Um, so it's, it's becoming more challenging. Um, but that's the, that's the name of the game. And you have to, um, you know, you have to embrace it um, and, and not get, you know, not be defeated by it or else it's going to be an issue. So, um, you know, we're, we're fine. So how do you generate cases now? Um, so we do a mix of paid, you know, paid advertising on the PPC. We are really upping our TikTok and Instagram. Um, you know, we post two to three times a week. Um, and in, in addition, we do a lot of like stories where it's like client, you know, anytime a client comes in, um, take a picture with them, video, video testimonial, um, and you know, just a lot of engagement on social media. And then we uh, market to our current clients. So we send them a birthday card uh, during their birthday month. Um, we send them a holiday card in December. Um, you know, they get the swag bag they got when they first signed up. They'll get it when they pick up their last check. So just another, you know, more stuff for them to remember us by. The same stuff or do you have like a different um, bag? You know, so, so, so much time has passed sometimes that we give the same. I don't think it hurts. Um, you know, there's so much in there anyways that... Um, we, we do the same. We do the same. And do you get feedback regarding this phone? People love it, yeah. People are like, yeah, my phone died and you saved my phone. Thank you for the power bank. I was like, okay, you're welcome, you know? So um, it's some cool stuff. Um, you know, so our staff loves it too. We have lip balm. You know, <laughs> the girls and Did our, you bring me that? You, again, you have to invite me back. I, um, I'll have to. I brought you a hat, a Nike hat. Oh. Okay, I'll take it. Now you're not going to get it. No, yeah, no. Um, and but the girls love the lip balm. So it's very, very, very popular. That's really cool. Yeah. So wait, let's go backwards. Your mentor tells you, 
rent an office from me, start your own firm. Yeah. And you do that. I did it, you yeah. know. And what, what was that like initially? It was scary. I had moved back in with my parents to save money because advertising back then was, I mean, at that, you know, relative obviously was a lot for me. Um, so I was trying to save as much money as I could. But I bought a contract where they, you know, from a lead gen company mm -hmm. that sent me like five, six calls a month. And then what I did, which really helped, is I went on the Cala listserv and I said, hey, uh, I'm a brand new attorney, you know, send me all your rejected cases that you're rejecting because like they're too small for you, but are still viable cases. You know, instead of losing out on all that money, you just, you know, it's one phone call, one email. And in, you know, six months to a year, you get a nice check for a referral fee. So I started getting cases that way. So you remember your first case? I do. I do. It was a... How did you get it? The mentor. Really? Yeah, the mentor. I mean, he was trying to help me out and he was like, hey... Uh, slip and fall at Home Depot. I was like, okay, let's go. Um, so I took my, you know, my clipboard <laughs> and I got in my car and I drove to Home Depot somewhere like 45, 50 minutes away. And I felt like, you know, this top, you know, top notch PI investigator, lawyer, <laughs> took out my phone and started taking pictures and interviewed her. And yeah, it was exciting. That's, that's really Yeah. And cool. it settled, you know, Obviously for, for, not obviously, but it settled, you know, for a small amount, but I was, it was, you know, client was thrilled. I was thrilled. It was a good start. That's, that's amazing. So what, what's been your biggest mistake in the past, what, 14 years? 14, about 14 years. That's a, nobody's ever asked me that. My biggest mistake, not being aggressive enough, um, being a little too timid, um, on, on trying on, on growing on scaling you know just there's so much pressure with advertising budgets and and you know and overhead and you know you want to make sure that everything is is you know is safe but sometimes being safe or too safe is not is not a good thing either um you, you know you shouldn't be um irresponsibly aggressive right but you should be aggressive like strategically and Put your, you know, put your neck out there a little bit more. So I was probably a little too um, passive. It's scary at first. It is. And it's still scary. I mean, I think it's all relative. Like if you are, you know, let's just, for example, spending, you know, X a month and X is a lot. You know, if you double X, what's, well, that's, you know, that's now you're double what you did before. So I think it can always be scary. Uh, it's all relative, really. I remember the first time we sponsored a conference. It was like the scariest thing in the world. Now we do like 20 a year exactly. and it's like whatever. That's how it starts. That's how it starts. And you're so, but I almost think it works against you. Like the more afraid you are, I think it's the more likely it is to fail because you, I'm all about energy and manifestation, but I feel like you block it. Like it's better to just like do it and have faith and just know like, you know, yeah. if this doesn't work, something else will. And I'm yeah. just going to push through it. And it just is what it is, right? And, like, you know you're not going to give up, right? If you have to, like, show up at Home Depot every day to take more pictures. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to do it. You're going to be okay. Right. So, yeah, I think a lot of attorneys are, they're scared to spend on advertising. And not everything works. So A lot, of, could, a lot of the stuff we use is it doesn't work. Yeah. We have to try it. You have to try it. But then some stuff works. And then you get excited, so... Right, and that's what kind of keeps you going. Yeah. Like once you get that first thing that works and you're like, okay, like what else can I do? And it can be very motivating. But if people don't take that first step, yeah. you're kind of stuck. Yeah, John Morgan talks about it in his book. Um, he, he uses an analogy, and I might be butchering it, but something about bullets versus cannon. So, you know, at first you want to just give a couple bullets. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know you're not going to go all, all out on, a, on, a, on the first, you know, time you try a marketing company and if something works then you you know you increase it and now you know you, instead of putting a little you're going to go heavy um so as long as you're you know you're strategically and and you're responsible in how much you're advertising it's okay to try out a bunch of stuff you know test it out a little bit and if it works then you know up it up up it every month what case management software do you use we now use litify we switched. Oh, yes. You and I talked about this. Yeah, we switched. We started, we started with, you know, I started with Word in February 2009. And then we, uh, we, we were very proud to, to upgrade to Abacus in 2010. And then it took us a while. But then we finally upgraded to Litify in 2020. 
How's that going? Fantastic. How long did it take you to feel like it's going fantastic? They may not like hearing this answer, but you know, over, over a year. That, I mean, that's the standard. Yeah. So you're not saying anything. Yeah, it was a huge learning curve. Nothing against Abacus, but Abacus is pretty um, primitive, and this is like, you know, the top of the, you know, I, I'm not to disparage the other ones out there, but it's it's I mean it's all inclusive. It has everything. I'm no well Salesforce. You can literally have yeah. it integrate with anything. Yeah. It's. So it's a known thing. So for your users that don't know, it's uh, Litify is based on Salesforce. Yeah. Um, so it's super customizable, which is it's probably its best attribute. You can have it do well, pretty much any, anything. anything you want. Yeah. Uh, so even after, so we, we spent, I don't know, six to nine months creating and creating it. And we thought, my partner, like, oh, we're done. You know, and then, no, it, was, it just started. You just want to keep, like, you, the more you try it, the more you use it, the more you want to customize it, the more features you want to add to it so you work with a you know implementation specialist or you have somebody in-house and you how just, do you do it uh we so at first they didn't offer this which was frustrating because we weren't told this until after we signed the contract but now they have like a monthly quarterly service where you hire them to do these projects did you integrate it with elevate not yet but we definitely need to i oh, see i just gave you an idea thank you you're welcome. Now I'll get you the lip on. <laughs> um, what have you integrated it with? With our e-sign document, we have a text uh, texting service that's integrated with where we text from the matter, which is really cool. It's synced with our Outlook, uh, with our, um, well, yeah, with our Outlook. So all the emails are linked to it. And it's also synced with our QuickBooks. So, oh, awesome. Yeah, so, the, so anybody that needs a, a check request, they'll make the request in Litify. Mm -hmm. It goes to our bookkeeper and she just gets the request and it's like pretty much pre-populated. So she doesn't have to do much in terms of like drafting it. And then the check is drafted and then it's already in Litify and obviously QuickBooks. Um, so that's a nice little integration. Um, those are the main integrations we've done. It's funny because I'm hearing of more and more smaller firms using Litify, whereas at the beginning, oh, nice. it was more like you had to have like 100 users or 50 users. I think people have like this misconception that you have to be like a massive firm to use Litify. Well, listen, Litify is pricey. I know. Uh, Litify is pricey. Well, Salesforce is pricey, period. Well, that's the, and that's why. So they yeah. have to pay Salesforce for their license, and right. then they need to make a profit. So. Yeah, so when you're telling me that a solo or a newish attorney, I'm very, very, very surprised to hear that. No, not a solo or newish. I'm talking about more mid-sized. Okay, mid-sized makes sense. Before, that yeah, wasn't I even would, the case before. I would, yeah, I would, I would highly advise against, again, sorry, Litify. You know, if you're a new attorney, newish, and, and you're barely making it, and, you know, wait till you make some I money. I think case peer is good if you're a new solo yeah. PI okay. firm and you want a case management software that's like out of the box solution, you're not going to be able to do everything you can with something like that's okay. Litify, but it's what you need then. Affordable? Oh yeah. If I could use, if I could do it with Microsoft Word and Outlook for a year, you can, you can do case pair sounds like. No, so. case pair is great. Yeah. We have I, some I heard, clients that I heard use it. I have good friends that use it. I heard fantastic things about it. Yeah. Again, super different, right? If you are a firm that wants to scale Definitely, that's probably not what I would recommend, um, but great, great out of the box yeah. solution. So what are you working on now? What are you really excited about? I'm really excited about, you know, chat GBT and AI. Oh God. Uh, well, it's, I mean, I played with it and it's, uh, it's, it's a little scary. It's a little terrifying actually. So someone said this to me the, the other day, I won't name them, but they said to me, look Maria, chat GPT is really just an algorithm. Like it's nothing that new or, or exciting if you really think of it from that standpoint that it is just an algorithm that's actually been around for a while because I feel the way you feel. I think it's really, really scary. So how do you think AI will change the PI space? Uh, great question. You know, my concern is, you know, AI writing all your blogs and all your material. So then Google came out and said, ah, you know, we're going to, we're going to easily be able to detect. Right. Um, and I think it's going to be a battle. I think it's going to be a battle between chat, GPT and Google and who can, it's a kind of like a race, you know, who can outsmart who, who can chat GPT outsmart Google and trick them into thinking it's a human. 
Can Google catch up? So I think that's going to be interesting. The last thing I want or anybody wants to do is to use ChatGPT to write a thousand pages of article and then just get blacklisted by Google because you've used that. That would be disaster. Now, you know, you've, you've spent 14 years building up this great SEO and you've been, um, you know, heavily penalized. But then it's also very tempting because you have this program that's going to just make your marketing like so much more efficient. So it's very, very interesting. It's, uh, it's fascinating, actually. And uh, we'll see. I don't know. It is. We're not worried about it in this point in time, mainly because at least when it comes to Google, anything that's your money or your life, so law, health, and finance, the scrutiny is way, way higher than in any other industry. Yeah, of so. And even as humans, we still want, when we read an article, we want it to be coming from someone that has the authority to write the article. And right. it just gets so complicated because you have different state laws. Like, it's just, I don't think that Google's gonna allow that. And if it does impact the yeah. PI space, it's gonna hit it last. So we're gonna, we will see it impacted in other, you know, sure. um, industries before it hits anything medical yeah, or sure. legal. For sure, for sure, for sure. Right? So yeah, it's something because it's like, can I just get a bunch of free articles? But right. I mean, and now it, they're watermarked. Yeah. yeah. So now it's like not really yeah. possible. To, right now we can tell the difference. You can. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, they're watermarking anything that comes I out know. of. I didn't yeah. know that. Didn't so know before that. they weren't, now there's a watermark. Okay. I had no idea. Okay, good to know. So, but we'll see. We'll see how, how it plays I out. I think it's going to be, yeah, I think it's going to be a huge uh, topic this year for sure and, and, and coming out. Well, before it was like the metaverse was so huge. What, whatever happened to the metaverse? I don't know. People are buying a lot of real estate in it. I don't know. Still? I've read some crazy article that it's valued in the billions. It's just insane, yeah. But no one's talking about it anymore. Um, I don't know what's going on. My real estate buddy, who's a brilliant real estate guy, was like, it's craziness. He doesn't know what's going on either. I mean, soon we'll see But to buy that Morgan much. and Morgan's billboards in the metaverse. <laughs> in the metaverse. So I, I, He's 100% going to be in the metaverse. I love the La, uh, La La Land. I can't believe no one thought of that before. Yeah. I mean, come on. That's great. I know. I mean, I know that it's like, it's Morgan. Yeah, I get it. We all hate him. But, <laughs> <laughs> but they were brilliant. I, I saw it today. I had never seen it in real life. And I was like, God, I can't believe no one thought about it before yep. them. Yeah. How? It's Mr. Morgan. I know. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Is uh, there anything else you want to add? Uh, that was awesome. I really enjoyed it. What were your takeaways from today's conversation? Um, an eye-opening one from you uh, about the open rate on sending newsletters. Yeah. Um, did not know that. So that's a huge thing to look into. Um, so we're definitely going to go back and, and examine that and make sure that we're not you know, violating any open rate uh, violations or anything like that. And if the listener could only take one takeaway from this, what do you think it should be? Believe in yourself, take chances, get a good mentor. And if you really want to practice law on your own, you know, do it. Thank you so much to Yossi Yehudai from JNY Law for everything he shared today. If you found this story valuable, please share it with someone you want to see succeed. Subscribe so you never miss an episode and leave a five-star review. It goes a long way to help others discover the show. Catch us next week on Tip the Scales with me, Maria Monroy, president of LawRank. Hear how the best in the business broke out of limiting beliefs, overcame adversity, and built a thriving purpose-driven business in the process.